Good morning, everyone. This is Chef Dennis from Hennepin Technical College, and we are live with Food What You Love. Stay tuned. We'll be right back with my friend Jonathan Fenton. Hello again, this is Chef Dennis Durniv with Hennepin Technical College uh, presenting you Food What You Love, a culinary show uh, together with interactive design and video production class. We are super happy here to start this new series, uh, interactive culinary show. And today I have my good friend, Jonathan Fenton, who I know for many, many years. And uh, we actually worked together at some time, I believe. Yes, in two we different companies. Did, yes, yes, exactly. And uh, now you came back here to Hennepin Technical College because you are the owner and operator of Java John's Roasted Coffee. And yep. oh my God, how the heck that happened? Can you tell us? Uh, um, <laughs> I uh, started as a coffee drinker very young. My grandfather got me going when I was five years old. And so I've been a coffee lover almost all my life and uh, started roasting coffee at home with a couple different small home roasters about six years ago and then purchased my first commercial coffee roaster a little over two years ago and oh. been doing it and uh, absolutely love helping people discover the uh, difference that fresh roasted coffee makes. And we definitely discovered it because you are now a uh, vendor for us. We're actually yeah. able to serve it here at the Hennepin Technical College and Culinary Room. So, uh, well, now can you tell us a little bit about actually origins of coffee? Where the coffee is actually coming from? Is it coming from for Starbucks? Sure. It Coffee, <laughs> you buy it at Starbucks, you might, but uh, that's not where it originated okay. from. Uh, coffee originated, mainly people think uh, as Ethiopia is the origin of coffee. And the part of the world where coffee is grown is right along the equator and north and south to the um, uh, close to the equator area. Um, it, it's a combination of uh, climate, um, warm days, cool nights. Uh, it needs a fairly high altitude to get the density of the bean correct and uh, then the right amount of water. Um, okay. And uh, um, so that band around the equator is where coffee is roasted. We have, I have coffees here from Guatemala, Peru, Ethiopia, some of my favorites. But um, Colombia, people know, is a very um, popular um, uh, country where coffee is grown. Uh, Brazil is the, the country that grows the most coffee in the world. Okay. Oh. Um, so you actually cannot really grow coffee in Minnesota? Well, you could, but <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, it probably wouldn't flower. And uh, if you did get beans from it, uh, the, the quality probably wouldn't be very good. And just like you said, you have the c different coffees here from different regions, basically, yep. coffee beans. Yep, and uh, we'll be making a cup of coffee uh, from Guatemala today. Wonderful. Um, so uh, can you tell me then a little bit about equipment that we're actually going to use today? And maybe not even so much uh, today, but uh, what kind of equipment do you need to have and what difference does it make um, between the commodity coffee and specialty coffee? Sure thing. There's a big difference in coffee quality. Um, the coffee that you get at the grocery store, I won't mm. mention any names, but the inexpensive coffee that you get at the grocery store is basically commodity coffee. Very inexpensive. Uh, the quality, the consistency oh. is far lower than in um, specialty coffee. Okay. With specialty coffee, uh, the beans are hand-picked when they are ripe, so they'll go back to the same coffee trees several times and pick those cherries wow. when, they're, when they're ripe. And that's how you call them, cherries? They're coffee cherries, and the coffee is actually a seed, not a bean. Okay. It's the seed of the coffee cherry. And specialty coffee is, is processed very carefully. It's sorted and hand-picked. Um, and so the, the quality, you're going to get consistent color, consistent size, and just a very um, much higher quality coffee in specialty grade coffee than what you'd get at the grocery store. Oh. What about the water 
Makes the um, difference. Good quality water is important. Um, you don't want it to be too soft. Mm -hmm. You don't want it to be super hard either. You need that right mix of minerals in the, in the, the water. So really, if your tap water is good quality, that's great. If not, you might want to filter it. Um, but good quality coffee makes a big difference in the quality of, of the coffee that you, um, that you have. Okay, um, now since we know what, uh, what uh, quality we have, uh, what should we use? What kind of equipment? We have a lot of here stuff here. It looks like a chemical lab. Yes, yep. Um, well, we'll start off with grinders. Uh, you don't have to have a grinder, but if you do, it's uh, great to have a, a high quality grinder. Consistent um, size of your ground coffee is important in quality coffee. You don't want big boulders and dust together. Okay. You want a consistent size. And so a high quality burr grinder like this um, works really well. If you can't afford a, a high quality electric grinder, you can get uh, this Hario grinder wow. for not much money. It does a great job. It just takes a little bit of work. Okay. You need um, to, yeah. Uh, one of the things that I have and I use on a regular basis, but again, you don't have to, um, is a scale. Mm -hmm. uh, weighing your coffee beans um, in before and out of the grinder, um, how much weighing the, the amount of water that you use um, is an important thing too. Again, it's not necessary, but it does help to have consistent results every time you make coffee. Awesome. Um, the very first pour-over coffee maker that I used was a Melita coffee maker that okay. I have right here. Um, very inexpensive. I think I paid $14 yeah. for this one. Um, simple and uh, makes really good quality coffee. And all what you do is you just uh, simply you, put the filter you inside. Put the filter and co water in there. Pour the pour the water in, and it go flows through. And there's not much to this. Um, when you jump over to these um, pour over makers here, the Hario V60 and uh, Chemex, um, they um, take a little more practice to get consistent results, but you can make awesome quality coffee from these And why um, is that? Makers. Why do you think they need more practice? Um, well, you, you are in control more of how, how much, how fast the water goes through the grounds okay. um, than the, the Melita. And so it takes some practice to get consistent results, but you can make awesome coffee with those. All right. And then when you go into a, a, a filter drip coffee maker uh, like this, uh, this is a Bonavita, great quality coffee maker, um, probably one of the more inexpensive, high quality makers mm -hmm. um, that conforms to the Specialty Coffee Association for high quality coffee. Um, this will heat the water to a, a temperature range of between 195 and 205 degrees, and it will um, make a pot of coffee in that range of like four to seven minutes. Okay. Um, usually right around five to six minutes for, uh, for a pot of coffee out of that Bonavita or something similar. Okay. Um, we'll make great quality coffee. Um, and I know we do not have it here, but what is espresso? Uh, espresso is a total different animal. Uh, very expensive equipment usually to make espresso. You need a very high quality grinder. Um, and uh, that is a whole other world getting into espresso and uh, cappuccinos and lattes awesome. and things like Maybe that. Maybe next time. Next time. What is yes. this? That is my, um, my water. It basically uh, heats up the water and that one is a special one. Uh, you don't need one like that. You can just get just it. a regular kettle on your stovetop just fine. Okay. Now we actually are going to make some coffee because it's been a, a wonderful morning. Sure thing. But I need to have some coffee. Okay. Well, this right here is the AeroPress. Okay. And it's one of the simplest coffee makers you can get. Um, a few pieces of plastic. Uh, the main chamber. Okay. And you take the filter. Sometimes you wet it beforehand. Um, the, what we're using today is the recommended uh, recipe from the designer of the AeroPress. 
Um, but there are thousands of ways to make coffee in the AeroPress. Um, take one scoop of coffee and put it in. And then you take your water and you pour it up to the number one okay. mark. And that's probably what makes about enough it's to make It's enough one for, cup. for a cup, yep. Cup. And you stir it up. Okay. That's simple enough for me. Yep. And then you put in the top part and you press it through. That's interesting process. So you literally press it with the airflow. Yep. Wow. And very quick. Yeah, it doesn't take long at all. And th what this produces right awesome. here is a pretty strong coffee that you then dilute to your desired strength with a little more hot water. This is amazing. And that's all there is to it. Again, you can get very technical. Um, thousands of recipes to make this, but this is the simplest AeroPress recipe. Well, I love coffee. Let me taste it and I'll let you know. That is the good quality coffee. You it's made great my coffee. day. I'm going to keep Thank it. You. Well, this is awesome. Thank you so much. I think it was a wonderful. I learned a lot today about the coffee. Thank you again for joining us here with Thank Food you for What You Love. Me. Great to um, be with you. This is the new show. And uh, in conclusion, just to let us really quick tell us where people can actually find you. Where can they buy this coffee? Well, um, my email address is javajohns at yahoo.com. And okay. John is J O N. So J javajohns at yahoo.com. And do you actually sell it at the farmer's market too? I have been. Uh, we're Wonderful. at the end of the season now. But yes, and I uh, deliver all over the, uh, the area as Wonderful. well. Wonderful. Well, again, thank you very much for joining us here live. Uh, food what you love at Hennepin Technical College. I am Chef Dennis teaching third semester here at Hennepin Tech. Uh, this, is the, this is the show about the food, about industry, and I will be happy to bring more guests here. And I would love to see you back here at the college as one of my students. Thank you so much. We'll be right back next week. Hennepin Technical College provides hands-on training for careers in culinary arts. Become a chef today. You'll gain a solid foundation in cooking and technique. Classes start in January and August. Hennepin Technical College. Get ready to go to work.